Hi, my name's Bruce. I am here to walk you through the steps of cooking those Chinese herbs you may have gotten from your acupuncturist or Chinese herbalist down into a tasty and healthy tea. Ready? All right, let's go. Now, if you are using your Chinese herb pot for the very first time, it's super important to soak it first for about an hour. You do this because otherwise it is likely to crack once you put it on your stove with cold water and herbs, and that makes a huge mess. I found the best way to do this is just to stick it in the sink, fill up the sink with water until it's covered, let it sit for an hour or so, and then just dry it off and you're ready to go. When you are looking at your instruction sheet, here's a little tip. Instead of starting at the top like we'd like to, look at the bottom of each little box and see how many cups of tea you want to boil your tea down into. In our case, it's two and two. So grab your cup measure. Our first one was two, so let's fill it up with two cups of water. Then we're going to pour this into the empty pot. And this is just to get sort of a visual idea of what two cups might look like. It's hard to see, especially on the video camera, but if you turn it around to where the spout is, there's a little hole, which you can sort of see the water level engage the distance from there. So now we get to start. Let us empty one bag of herbs into the pot and add five cups of water. Here's your herbs. Here's the fun part. Put them on in and you want to make sure you get all the herbs in there. Some of them are really small, so make sure that's definitely empty. It sure is. Look and see what you got this time. Looks pretty basic and pour in your water. I only have a four cup measure, so we're gonna start with four cups and then add one more at the end. I like to take a little spoon and sort of stir them around to make sure that anything floating on the top is really underneath. And then we're gonna let this sit and soak for about 30 minutes. This helps to soften up the herbs and get them in a better mode for transmitting all their goodness to us. Half an hour later, you can see they've gotten kind of soaked up and soft looking. We are gonna turn on the flame. With these pots, it's often better to use a gas flame. If you're using an electric burner, you might wanna not put it on high, but start at medium, because sometimes the electric burners can crack these pots. Put the top on, and we see that we brought it to a nice rolling boil. This, is helps, this helps to break down the cell walls quickly, but once you do that, you can bring it down to medium low, and let them just simmer gently until they have gotten down. So if you look now, you can see that's just a nice simmer. The steam is barely coming out. Even when you open it, it looks like it's a full rolling boil, but it's perfect. Just let this sit and boil down. When about 30, 45 minutes has gone by, you can probably look inside and then just strain it out. I like to strain mine into my cup measure so I can see roughly how close I was. It's not really precise. If you're a little bit more, a little bit less, not a big deal, but let's see. Yep, I did a pretty good job. So let's add three more cups of water, put the top on, and then we're gonna boil just one cup of water off. And when we're done, pour this into our cup measure and you add this to the first strained decoction. This time you can tell I had a little bit extra, but again, it's not a big deal. This isn't a super precise method. And there you go. There's your herbal tea. I have found that it's helpful when you have your tea to put it into a sealable type jar. This is because these Chinese teas can sometimes be a little bit fragrant. And that's not really the kind of smell that you want transferring to any food in your refrigerator or vice versa. So putting it in a resealable jar really helps. Wait, did someone say Chinese herbs can be kind of fragrant? Oh my god, what is that smell? <laughs> you! Yeah, so any housemates or family members might not really appreciate you stinking up the house with your herbs. Now if that's the case, one good method is just to bring it outside. You can get these burners at hardware stores or drug stores. They don't cost that much. And they're not super strong either, so these are nice. You can just turn them on high cook your herbs down outside. Maybe your neighbors might hate you, but your family or your housemates won't, which is good. So if you don't want to buy one of those Chinese pots and you happen to have a non-metal container at home, such as this Visions cookware pot that I have, those work great too. The method is really similar. 
Uh, they don't always fit perfectly, so you can see I didn't get the whole five cups in. This is a small pot, so what I would do, fill it up as much as you can and just boil it down, you know, you get the proportions the same. So if it was five to three, kind of go from three to, I don't know, 1.75 or two. Be sure you do two boilings before, uh, just like the other one. Turn on the heat, you're gonna boil it down. Careful that you don't make a mess like I did because it leaked out. And yeah, you can see it's boiling pretty good. You still wanna do two boilings. This is my second boiling. I can see how much it's boiled down. I'm gonna add this to the first one. I could use a strainer, but I don't always because sometimes I get lazy and that's fine. If you get some of the herbs in your tea and you happen to drink them, it's not the end of the world. It's basically people think it's gross, but whatever works for you. And there you have your second batch of tea. Now what to do with the dregs? You can put it on the sink. Oh no, that's not good. That's wasteful. So some people maybe just would want to throw them out into the garbage can. No. The best place to put your used herbs is into your compost bin. They are organic material and this helps reduce our landfill usage. Good for everyone. Now if you're not going to be around to monitor the cooking of your herbs, which admittedly may take one to two hours, I like to use the crockpot method. This is very similar to the other method in that you start off by putting in your herbs. Now remember our instruction sheet, how at the bottom it had special instructions telling you to add ginger or little white packets or whatever. So you want to remember to do that at the very beginning. So here I'm adding some green onions and a little bit of ginger. Sometimes we've already pre-sliced the ginger and wrapped it in plastic wrap and put it in your bag. Before you put that in, be sure to take the ginger out of the plastic wrap. And then instead of measuring out five cups of water and whatever, with the crock pot method, you can just fill the crock pot to the top with water and put it on the top, plug it into the wall and turn it on. The soaking will happen automatically because the crock pot heats really slowly. Here I'm showing you how it's kind of dry. And what my favorite way to do is just to turn this on before I go to sleep at night and then in the morning, my herbs are ready for me to take. It does take a while for it to start boiling. You can see here, it will eventually start, so don't worry so much about if it looks like nothing's happening. This is especially good for tonifying. So when you're done, you wanna drink one cup in the morning, one cup in the evening. However, with the crock pot method, you might have a little more, a little less. All you need to do is get the proportions right, split it into four. Here I'm gonna take my half cup measure, which you can do if you boil it down more, but whatever, this is just to show you and scoop it out and take a sip. Mmm, delicious. Ugh. Granted, the herbs don't always taste great, but they are good for you. Well, thanks for watching our step-by-step -step instruction on how to decoct your Chinese herbs. If you have any other questions or you'd like to make an appointment, just call us at our clinic at 415 282 9603. Thanks so much. Bye.